Good morning, everyone. Okay. So th thank you for having me. Th thank you for having me. Um, today, I will keep it very simple. I will talk about what we are doing at Qualcomm in the wearable space, how we see the market, what our strategy is. Um, but, but then most of the time, I'm going to talk about what our customers are doing to accelerate the wearable segment, wearable opportunity, how they are taking our technology and innovating on top of it. So let's see, I'm told we have about 1,000 people here. How many of you have a phone? Everyone, good. How many of you have a wearable device? You know, maybe 20% of you. Um, our prediction is, over the next two or three years, just like every hand went up for the phone, uh, we expect every hand to go up for wearable. We are seeing significant interest. We are seeing significant momentum. Um, you know, at Qualcomm, uh, you know Qualcomm as the phone company over 35 years. What we are seeing is the same technology, the same basic IP is actually finding its way in a number of new segments around the phone space. Um, I have listed three or four segments here. Automotive. Automotive is the biggest mobile platform, if you think about it. Tablets. Networking. And last but not the least, Internet of Everything. When we think about Internet of Everything, we divide it into three segments. Uh, devices that are out in the city, so security cameras, parking meters, those kind of things. Uh, devices that are in the home, they could be thermostats, lighting, appliances, smart TVs, and then last but not the least, devices on you. Everything you wear, whether it is a pair of glasses, or wrist devices, or clothing, that's what we call the wearable segment. So let, let's look at the wearable segment. Um, you know, our friends from IDC are here. Um, I'm sure they will talk about how big the wearable segment is. But no matter how we slice it, this segment is growing dramatically. This particular statistic from Strategy Analytics says the revenue will 10x over the next five years. Anything that grows 10x is significant change. We, we are excited about that. Um, you know, I have three or four phones, but I'm not a typical person. Most of us have one phone. When we think about a wearable device, I expect each one of us to have multiple wearable devices. Um, today, I'm wearing two watches. Um, one is from LG, and one is from Samsung. I wanted to maintain the balance. <laughs> I'm wearing a couple of trackers. Um, this is the Microsoft Band. This is the Jawbone. Um, I'm wearing something in my shoe. I'm wearing something in my belt. So I have six wearable devices today. Over time, we expect each one of us to have multiple wearable devices. And these wearable devices talk to each other, communicating with each other, uh, maintaining the same database, um, being smart, working with each other. And um, in addition to these wearable devices, 
combined with my phone, they deliver a good user experience. So multiple devices with my phone, whether I'm working, uh, whether it's my personal life, um, they make my experience better. That's the vision we have. So what are we doing about this vision? Um, first, it is instructive to look at how we think about different segments. So from a user perspective, these are the four or five segments we are going after. The first three segments, um, we are generally seeing a tethered use case. Tethered in this case means my watch has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it communicates to my phone with the cloud. And then we are seeing connected use cases across the board. What that means is my Samsung watch has a 3G modem. When I have my phone with me, it uses the phone to connect to the cloud. But when I leave my phone behind, when I go for a run, it still works. It still keeps me connected. It still keeps, keeps working for me. The, the segments we are seeing, fitness and health, um, I'm, I'm glad uh, we have Marco here from Polar. Um, Polar has been an innovator in the fitness space. Uh, with, with new technology coming in, uh, with, with a range of apps coming in, we think we, we are about to go to the next level with a 10x kind of disruption. Um, young adults, you know, all of us have phones. We want to be always connected. Uh, things like smart watches are helping you do that. We are seeing a lot of um, action in the enterprise space. Um, I, will, I will talk more about that. And then last but not the least, we are seeing kid watches and elderly watches gain a lot of good momentum. Uh, what a kid watch does is it allows me to know where my five-year-old daughter is. Uh, she can call me anytime. Uh, if she leaves school, I get a text. So we are always connected. These, these are the five segments we are targeting. From a device perspective, we are looking at these four segments. So starting from the bottom, uh, body sensors, things that you wear. Um, number two, smart trackers, uh, these kind of bands. Uh, number three, smart watches. And number four, the glass segment. I'll touch on each one of these. Um, let, let's start with body sensors. Um, you know, when, when we think about body sensors, it is a single purpose device. Uh, it could be a heart rate monitor. It could be a pedometer in my shoe. It could be something to track one of my vital signs. Very targeted, highly precise, always on you. The battery life is one month or longer. You live with it, you sleep with it, you breathe with it. Um, devices like that make you healthier, fitter, um, and improve your life. We, we are seeing a lot of interest in this space. The, the second um, uh, segment is smart trackers. Uh, the Microsoft band based on um, Qualcomm Bluetooth is a good example of that. In addition to body sensors, it has a good, si good size screen. So it also gives me notifications on things I care about. Um, it, it enables me to be a quantified self, enables me to quantify my sleep, and then improve on it. Um, the, the third segment are smart watches. There has been a lot of attention in the watch space over the last year. Um, I will talk more about this. Uh, we are seeing watches in two or three categories, the tethered watch, the connected watch, and then the kid watches. Um, 
with, with Android Wear, for example, you are seeing more and more applications, uh, more and more ecosystem efforts uh, driving the momentum in this space. And then last but not the least, uh, the smart eyewear segment. Um, there are two kinds of smart glasses. One is the head-mounted display. Um, the, the glasses you use for uh, movies, games. And the second kind of display is a see-through display. Um, using this, I can be driving my car, and in my peripheral vision, I get important notifications, or I'm getting turn-by-turn -turn directions. Um, so I don't have to look down uh, at my dashboard. Uh, this makes my driving smoother. So we talked about different kind of users, different kind of device segments. At the end of the day, for, for any of these devices to be successful, they need to have some basic ingredients. Um, in this simple chart, I'm showing first the foundation has to be right. Different segments require different kind of performance. The performance requirement for a body sensor is very different from a performance requirement here. So you need to be able to pick and choose the right CPU, the right MCU, the right graphics, the right sensors, the right audio, and so on. Then we have what we call four pillars in the variable space. Um, thin and light, size is very important. These things should disappear in my body. Number two, power, power, power. Battery life is very important. Number three, these devices need to be always on. Uh, they are very rich of sensors, so they need to be always sensing. Always on, always sensing is, is imperative. And last but not the least, um, if they are not connected, they are not very useful. So, so we expect these devices to be always on, always connected. The definition of always connected could vary. It could be Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE. It could be Wi-Fi. It could be 3G. It could be LTE. It could also be GPS. It could also be NFC. Um, and picking and choosing the right kind of flavor of connectivity for a given form factor is, is critical. So, so those are the four vectors we think we have to excel to be successful. And then on top of that, uh, this is all about the right software, the right user experience, the right applications, the right ecosystem. So um, this is how we think about uh, when we think about what is a successful wearable device. I'll keep this very simple. Um, you know, why Qualcomm? First, the foundation. Uh, we have many, 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 many chips. Uh, we pick and choose from different chips. Uh, we do different optimizations. So you have the right processor for this, the right one for this, the right one for this, and the right one for this. Everything from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi to 3G or 4G. All kind of APs, all kind of MCUs, all kind of sensors. That's the foundation. Um, each one of the vectors, uh, we have multiple initiatives underway, aligned with the requirements um, for a successful wearable. I'll give you some examples. When we think about thin and light, um, highly integrated chipset. So, so you can pack as much juice as possible in a really small form factor is the name of the game. Qualcomm has been doing that for many years. Um, uh, that, that's how we made our name in the phone space. We are bringing that same integration 
in this space. Another example would be different packaging technologies. Um, so we have innovated around the EPOP package. The EPOP package is basically you take the chipset, um, you put memory on top of it, and then you put storage on top of it, and you have a stackable solution. These are just two, two examples uh, of things we are doing to drive thickness. In, in battery life, you know, if Qualcomm had a middle name, it would be low power, right? Um, Qualcomm is good at low power. All of our chipsets are low power. In addition to that, uh, we are doing a number of platform optimizations in the wearable space to meet the unique battery life requirements. A month here, a week here, charge every night or every weekend, um, and charge uh, after long uses, uh, long durations of time here. So on the supply side, or on the demand side, we are working to drive low power consumption at the platform level and at the chipset level. On the supply side, uh, we have things like wireless charging. So when, when you have to charge, make it easy to charge, right? When you have to charge, charge it quickly. Uh, those are some techniques we are using. Um, on sensors, we, we integrate the sensor hub in the chipset. It drives lower power, drives smaller size, drives a better end-to-end -end solution. And then last but not the least, always connected. Uh, you know, we are integrating all of these technologies in our chipset. So, so you have it when you need it. Um, our chipsets come with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, 3G, 4G. Most of the time, maybe you're working on Bluetooth. But if you leave your phone behind, you go to 3G or LTE. Um, the other point I want to make is, you know, we pretty much work with everyone on the software side. Um, we have products shipping based on Android, on Android Wear, on Tizen, on LG OS, and al also on some of the RTOS platforms like Brew. Um, so, so the ecosystem is thriving on, on the Qualcomm Silicon and Qualcomm-enabled platforms. So en enough about Qualcomm. Switch gears, talk about our customers. Um, you know, we have many devices shipping. Last count, we had 20-some devices shipping in 30 countries. This is just over the last nine months or so. Um, many more products under development. Everything from a glass to a watch to a tracker. Um, what I'd like to do is take a few examples and talk about what our customers are doing to innovate on top of Qualcomm technology. Maybe the first example I'll take is a kid watch. Um, you know, this is a kid watch uh, shipping in Korea. Um, this is the only color I got, pink. Um, it does a few things really well. It has integrated GPS. So using my phone, I can tell where my five-year-old daughter is. Um, I can use geofencing, so if she leaves school, I know she left school. It has emergency calling. It has the ability to make four or five phone calls. Um, using my phone, I can program. Um, call mom, call dad, call teacher, um, call doctor, call police. So um, I cannot give my phone to my five-year-old daughter, but I give this to my daughter, and um, I know where she is. She can always reach me. And then it has some fun and games, so, so she likes wearing it um, most of the time. We are seeing a lot of interest in this space. Um, you know, they, they are connected. 
Very simple use case. They find it fun. And one of our customer partners, um, Infomark, um, just over the last nine months, they have introduced two different versions um, based on our technology, now available on different operators in Korea, uh, but also getting ready to export outside Korea. So a lot of interest in the kid watch category. Next segment I would highlight are the Android Wear smartwatches. Um, it is surprising to believe uh, that Android Wear was launched only about a year ago, actually less than a year ago. And today we have many uh, Android Wear watches shipping. Almost all of them, most of them, are based on Qualcomm technology. What an Android Wear watch does is it brings the Android ecosystem to the convenience of your wrist. It does not mean it's the same application. It does not mean it's the same functionality. The UI is changing, how you interact with it. The paradigm is changing. Um, but, uh, but the developer ecosystem uh, comes with it. Um, I'm running short of my pockets, but uh, maybe the one I would highlight, uh, this is the Asus ZenWatch 2. Um, it is being rolled out as we speak, uh, the latest Android Wear watch uh, based on Qualcomm technology. Uh, you have seen other products um, from Samsung, from LG. Uh, I'm wearing the LG Urbane. Um, it's, it's a beautiful watch. Um, I, I like it a lot. I have to wear both of, both of them, though. Um, so um, a lot of interest, a lot of momentum in Android Wear. Next. You know, in the wearable space, all of the established players are innovating. But we also find a number of new players jumping in. Um, this company, Blocks, it is run by um, a couple of students going to college in London. And they had this brilliant idea. Um, they said, you know, we don't wear the same clothes every day. People don't like wearing the same watch every day. So what if we made the watch modular? What they're doing is, um, there is the core, and then there are different blocks. So you could have a block for a battery. You could have a block for heart rate monitor. You could have a block for uh, maybe a second screen. And um, they are innovating with, with an architecture like this. Uh, we, we at Qualcomm are very excited uh, about this innovation, about innovations by smaller companies uh, coming, coming from the startup space. Um, we, we are supporting. Uh, blocks. Uh, today we are announcing that the first watch they are working on is, is based on Qualcomm technology. Um, and it, you will hear more about it over the next few months. Maybe the last example I would highlight is uh, what we are doing with BMW. Um, you know, research has shown that um, many of the accidents are caused because you're fiddling with your um, radio or because you're looking down on the dashboard. Um, and if we can eliminate uh, distracting features in your car, uh, we can reduce the number of accidents. 
So what we are doing is we are working with BMW um, on augmented reality kind of use cases where you wear a glass like the one I showed you. Um, it is a see-through glass, so you're looking ahead. But then here you see you get turn-by-turn -turn directions. So you're not distracted by looking down. Um, and we are working with them to make sure the, uh, the user experience does not inhibit your driving. Uh, it adds to your driving. Uh, this is uh, an early prototype, um, but, but we think there is a lot of potential on a use case like this. So um, we, we have many more things cooking. My time is uh, running out. So I will, I will leave you with maybe two or three very simple things. You know, there is a lot of action, a lot of excitement, a lot of interest in the wearable space. The first and most important thing to focus on is how will it improve my, my life, personal life, work life? What, what is the use case? Why should I wear a device like this here or a, wear a device like this here? Focus on use cases may be the most important thing. Uh, products uh, come later. Uh, that's how we approach any wearable product. That's how we approach any wearable segment. So first, focus on the use case. Second, um, wearables is not one product. Wearables, by definition, are diverse. They come in different shapes and sizes. Um, today, we are seeing wearable products in these four categories, um, glass, smartwatches, trackers, and body sensors. Uh, we think this is just the beginning. We will see hyper-segmentation, and we will see more kind of um, segments emerge. Last, um, you know, at, at Qualcomm, um, we are focused on these four vectors, size, power, sensors, connectivity. We are innovating um, around each one of these. Um, you, you can see the products that um, are coming out this year versus next year. You will see uh, visible improvement on each one of those vectors. Um, and you know, at Qualcomm, we, um, execution is the name of the game. We, we know how to execute um, around each one of these vectors. And of course, working with the ecosystem, the, the software ecosystem, Android, Android Wear, Tizen, LG OS, and a host of our tosses. Um, let me stop here. Thank you very much for listening. Mr. Kadia, thank you very much for joining us today.